a long time ago when I lived in England, I one of my hobbies was looking at the astronomy of the stone circles in England, st Stonehenge and so on, and uh, started with uh, a group of students, including myself, and we published a few papers looking at the astronomy of Bronze Age people in Britain. So when I moved to Australia, uh, I was interested to find that there's one or two things written about the astronomy of Aboriginal Australians. And of course I was interested, but I was busy. <laughs> Until a few years ago, I, I had some time to s start looking at this properly. And I, I knew there had been a few bits and pieces. And I thought, was well, this real? Do indigenous Australians really, did they really have an ast astronomy in this culture? Or is it just a, a few stories about the sky? And by astronomy, what I mean is, did indigenous people hundreds of years ago, did they actually try to understand how the sky worked? Did they try to understand how eclipses work, how tides work? Um, did they uh, see that planets move differently from the stars? Things like that. Did they use them for navigation? Did they make calendars using the stars? Uh, that, those are the things I call astronomy. And so was there stuff like that or was there just a few stories about the sky? And um, so this is about five years ago. And initially, my wife and I started digging into this, and I was amazed by what I found. There's a whole great load of this stuff. And yes, there are Aboriginal stories describing eclipses, which are basically right. People, there's some guy or woman out there in the bush has been watching an eclipse, thinking, why is that happening? Why, why is the moon going out? And they figured it out. And in their own cultural terms, they said, OK, this is the, the uh, moon man and the sun woman are making love. And as they make love, the body of one covers the other. This is exactly right, the body of one covers the other. The young new people up in Arnhem Land, they have these songs which describe how the phases of the moon influence the tides. Now, this might, people might say, well, that's obvious. Well, actually, no, it isn't at all obvious. So Galileo in the 17th century was saying, no, the moon's got nothing to do with the tides. Galileo got it wrong. The young new people in Arnhem Land got it right. So there is this great knowledge there about the sky, and people have been studying it in traditional Aboriginal cultures. And um, what I found so interesting is that when you read the anthropology textbooks, you don't get a sense that, yes, we know there's all this art and dancing and all these beautiful ceremonies, you don't get a sense of this deep intellectual part of Aboriginal culture. And this is what we're finding in the astronomy. There's a lot of intellectual thought has gone into that. There have been Aboriginal Einsteins out there trying to figure out how the universe works. And uh, the Aboriginal people don't have uh, writing in traditional cultures, but they do have these songs which pass from generation to generation. And so you find these things in the words of the songs, uh, deep insights into how the universe works. I, I find that wonderful. It's just a completely new insight on how deep and complex Aboriginal cultures are.